following program was underwritten by the Resource Enhancement and Protection Conservation Education Program. We had a severe drought this summer, probably the worst since the 1930s. So some of the seedlings might show a little bit of uh, uh, drought stress. Uh, we actually probably have less establish establishment uh, than we have had in typical prairie plantings, and I'm sure that's due to, to the drought conditions we had this summer. Okay, a little more information about the planting site. Uh, this site has been mowed for establishment mowing. Uh, probably about three times this summer and so what you're seeing out here for the most part is growth after the last mowing which was about three weeks ago and uh, it's really important to do that establishment mowing and it actually makes the the seedlings easier to find uh, if you don't mow you Chances are you, you will have a just a forest of weeds and it'll be much, much more difficult to find the native seedlings under those conditions. Okay, a couple of tips when going out to try to identify native seedlings in a new planting. The first thing is you need a species list. You need to know what was planted out here and that, that way you can narrow down your possibilities of, of what the plants might be. The other is, is to have uh, reference material for small seedling plants that you could reference when you're finding these little teeny plants. One good guide is our Tallgrass Prairie Center Guide to Seed and Seedling Identification. Uh, there are other guides out there. Uh, just make sure that you bring something that has some photographs of these small seedlings so you can, you can uh, reference what you find. The other thing you might want to bring out is a hand lens. And this is just a very inexpensive uh, double hand lens. I picked this up at one of the local supply houses. I think it was only about six dollars. Um, you can get quite quite expensive ones, but uh, these work just fine. Remember, we're looking at plants that are are two to four inches high, and some of the the identification characteristics are quite small. And you'll like me. I'm 52 years old. I need something to magnify some of those parts once in a while. One unique characteristic about this site is that when we seeded this last November, we used a Truax no-till drill, and so when we find seedlings, that's one of the one of the tricks to finding native seedlings is if the site has been drilled, uh, look for small plants that seem to be in rows, and uh, that's that's one of the easiest ways to to start finding your your plants that your native plants. So I came out earlier this morning and just to save time, I actually found some seedling plants. Uh, like I say, this, this particular planting went through a, a severe drought this summer and I expected the establishment to be a little bit better. Um, so some of the seedlings we're finding are still in rows, but you'll see there are big gaps in between where our flags are. And uh, that's probably again due to the, the really dry conditions and, and hopefully that seed will come up next year. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, this first plant that I found, and we, uh, we kind of lucked out here because it actually has a seed head. And this is quite, this, for this particular species, uh, this is quite common um, th that this plant can flower even though it's a perennial in the first growing season. And this is Cydo's grandma, and it's got a very characteristic seed head on it. And you don't really need a seedling ID book, you can just go by the seed head on this to, to figure out what this plant is. To give you an idea how big the, the rest of the plant is, you know we're looking at about three to four inches high. If you if you don't look at the flower the flower shoot on this plant, okay. The, now you may ask, well, what if it didn't have a flower stalk? How would I know this is side oats grandma? Well, one of the the key characteristics of side oats is that it has individual hairs on the edges of the leaf margin. And if you look at a hand lens, with a hand lens, those hairs have a little bulb uh, that's actually connected to the leaf. And I'll pull off a leaf and maybe we can get this on the shot. There's the leaf. I'm not sure if you can see it on the shot. Uh, what we'll do is uh, when we look at, at 
some more of the, the close-up photos, uh, you'll be able to see those, those individual hairs and those, those little uh, the sacks that connect the hair onto the, onto the edge of the leaf margin, the leaf blade. Okay, the second uh, grass species that I found in close proximity to the side oats grandma and probably within the same drill row is this particular plant right here. And this is Indian grass. And you can see that it's about four inches tall. Uh, one thing about the grasses, uh, if you really don't know what it is, but you suspect that it might be a native grass, when all else fails, do the tug test. And the tug test is simply just grab the plant and give it a little bit of a pull. And you can see, even, even this small plant has probably got roots that are, you know, four to six inches deep at least. And so, you know, when you tug on it, it stays in the ground. Uh, by contrast, here's a foxtail. And obviously it has the seed head on it, so you probably know it's foxtail. But if it didn't have that seed head, let's do the tug test and see how it just easily pulls right out of the ground. And this is characteristic of annual plants. You know, the strategy of annual plants is to, to, to basically uh, germinate, grow, mature, produce seed, and die in that first year. And so there's not a lot of effort put into a really deep root system. Now, how do I know that this is, a, this is a, uh, an Indian grass? You can tell by the ligule. The ligule on here is a little hardened ligule, and that's that little, that's that little uh, membrane that's right at the base of the leaf, um, between the stalk and the leaf, and I can feel it. It's hard. And so I'm 99% I'm confident that this is an Indian grass. This is, uh, again, this plant is about five inches tall. Uh, this is little blue stem. Right here, this is a little blue stem, and you can see there's multiple shoots off this. There's not just one shoot, but there's multiple shoots off of this one seedling plant. And the way I know that this is a little blue stem is because it has a flattened stem, and the stem is so flat near the base of the plant that I can't, I can't roll it between my fingers. It's just, it's just wafer thin flat. The leaves are fairly narrow. You can see these have fairly narrow leaves, but it's really that flattened stem that keys me into to little blue stem. The next plant that we encounter is sawtooth sunflower, and it's this big cluster of plants right here. And sometimes, sometimes we'll have certain plant species that, that can grow very large in that first year. Uh, we, we looked at Sido's grandma producing a flower spike, but uh, a sawtooth sunflower is one of those one of those uh, uh, prairie wildflowers that can grow very large in the first growing season, and this is a this is a good example of one. All these shoots here are from one plant, and you know it's probably when we were doing our establishment mowing, we probably mowed this a couple of times because it's so tall. But you can see next year this plant will probably be about six feet tall and I'm sure it'll, it'll flower and produce seed next year. This is a very healthy plant. And again, look at that dark green color, uh, you know, versus some of these other plants that are starting to lose their color. Key characteristics of this particular species is it has long, long slender leaves that are highly serrated. In other words, they're, they're like a sawtooth on the edges of the leaf. They have opposite leaves, so you can look at it and see that the leaves are opposing each other. There are hairs on the leaves, and if you rub your finger on these leaves, they feel kind of coarse. They're kind of gritty. But basically, it's this long, slender, uh, serrated leaf that really gives it away to this, this particular species, sawtooth sunflower.